my mum. <laughs> Obviously, I was in pain and I was sobbing and yeah, she was there. Well, yes, my beautiful daughter, she helped me. Um, just when I was in bed, brought me drinks, hot drinks to make sure that I was hydrated. Medication, the general hot soup, things like that. So, because at first port stop is here. <laughs> It's her house. If I'm poorly, then I know I can actually depend on her. So then I, I just come to her house. Oh, he's such a lovely husband. He's there, he makes the food as well. He takes care of the kids. Yeah, he was there for me. I have a partner who I live with who is, he's, it's a cycle I kind of go through. So he um, is quite supportive um, in terms of helping me when I'm not feeling great. I had to ask for help um, and I turned to my mum because uh, now it might be a different story where she can, my daughter can sort of, you know, watch, watch the tweenies and, and eat, you know, eat a breakfast herself. I, I had, I was nursing, I had, I was up all night with her um, and also I was afraid to pass whatever I had onto her because as you know when you're so close to an 11 month old baby um, my mum bless her took time off work because she couldn't not um, I, I'm a single mum myself so there was just me and my daughter at home so my mum actually came and stayed in, that, in my spare room um, and I honestly don't know what I would have done You know with an older generation you make sure that Tom is all right, you know, he's had something to eat, he's warm, you know, they've got my phone number in case they need me across the road, I have their keys for their house in case something go wrong, they, none of them can open the door, I go in mm. and open the door. I think neighbourly, good neighbourly love is not there anymore and that's what you need. Yeah, and there was, I mean, uh, an incident. My daughter lives in some um, flats in, in, in Hume, a very nice sort of cooperative area. And a woman who was badly injured in a, in a road accident who lives on her own there put out an email around asking for help to get two appointments, help around the house, because she, again, was, was unable to move around. And lots of people got involved with that. A, a friend of mine did. I was working at the time, so I couldn't have done it. But a friend of mine who'd retired, who didn't know this person before, took her to several appointments. And she had to email around, because obviously she had some friends who were able to help out, but it was a massive amount of work for this particular person, um, because she needed lots of appointments, lots of physio, hydrotherapy, all that kind of thing. Couldn't get on a bus, couldn't afford taxis, ambulances, you're on it all day, if, you, you know, if you're lucky and you're only... So... She actually did it by email and people responded. Uh, I, well, I think one thing was that it meant that I didn't have to worry. Yeah, I knew that I had food available for me. Um, I knew that I could rest up if I stuck to the rules and not be under any pressure whatsoever. And it was simply nice seeing them as well. They were all people I knew well. Yeah, and so we could have a chat and a cup of tea and then they would you know, go on their way and what have you. Or if they said, if I, they said to me, you know, uh, if you don't want us here, we'll scoot. I could have said that, but yeah, it was very informal and easy. She, she went online and had a bit of a look to, uh, to check to see if there's anything else that she could have done. But actually, really, it was more just a case of being there, as in just sitting next to me, um, offering and making sure I was, I was fed and watered and everything. And also just just sort of keeping a check on seeing what the pain level was like and also figuring out whether it was something I needed to go to the doctor about or whether it was something just to sit tight and wait for it to get better. Um, well, I would make, make, make tea and make an extra one for me and drop it off for me. And I have a, a, an ex-boyfriend around the corner as well that when I'm not well, he's brilliant. He always drops me off a meal at night. He'll make him, say he's making for himself, he'll make the same for me in a Tupperware dish. You know, bring it round because I you know, tech, well, I'm texting him saying I'm feeling absolutely shit, and he'll say right, well, I'll drop it, I'll drop you some tea off. So that's basically that's how they help me really. Yeah. 
Oh, she did everything because I could hardly move. For the first week, she did everything. She had to help me with daily care. She had to do the cooking. And she had to help. Help me. She had to help me with breakfast, dinner, tea. She had to help me with daily care and help me getting dressed, wash, that sort of thing. Probably seeing people. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, because at the worst I could get into the fridge and get something out and make something of it. If just sticking it in the microwave or anything, I was capable of doing that. But what they were bringing was much nicer food, but what they also brought was some contact. I think, again, just being there and just making sure he was okay, and if he needed anything, just bringing it for him and just making sure he was comfortable, really. Just support, really. More, you know, more than actually putting shoes and socks on or getting it shopping or whatever. That was it. Actually, just to give you a cuddle when you're feeling a bit down. And that's what happens when you're poor, like, obviously, you feel rubbish. Knowing that I wasn't on my own, that I had someone to call on if I, if I needed help. She was always there on, on my head, this one as well. You can do most things for me as well. Yeah, the most important thing is that somebody is there. In case of any emergency, you have somebody that will speak out, that will shout out for people to help. That is the most important thing. If there is nobody there, I think I will think more. So that's the reason why a lot of people we need help. I think it's just kind of the emotional support and actually knowing that there's somebody there that has kind of got your back a little bit and is there for you if you need them. I'm I don't really like letting people help me. It's kind of the way I am. Um, I probably should do more of it because life would be a lot easier rather than trying to do everything myself. Um, but yeah, knowing that there's somebody there that will support you, whether you're ill or whether it's something emotionally that's going on in your mind, is what's probably the most important to me. And, you know, equally to, to be able to provide somebody else with that support, whether that's friends or family or, you know, elderly rel relatives or whatever. I think they cared in quite different ways. My mum's quite a... I don't know how to <laughs> describe it. Um, she's quite a bossy woman. Um, and so if you were ill when you were a child, she'd be kind of telling you what you had to do to get yourself better. Um, whereas my grandma's very much a, like a feeder <laughs> and a carer and a hostess. And so she didn't want you to move. She didn't want you to... Yeah, my grandma was a here's your drink, here's your thing, here's your teddy, here's the telly kind of a... Carer, whereas my mum would kind of let you get on with it until you asked her to do something. I think you learn what you do from people as well. So I think some of the reason why I'm a really bad carer to start with is that the lessons I have was that you always get up and you go to work, you always go to school, you know, that illnesses are things that you shouldn't have. That's, that's the family ethic I learned. And I think I'm learning now from, or, or certainly, you know, in 20 years of being with my wife, I've learned that, you know, there's, a, there's an entirely different way of doing things than actually, um, you know, caring and looking after people. And when people are ill, they're ill, and you've got to do that. Um, so I think you learn from your loved ones and the people around you, and I think you learn from how people treat you, which is actually quite a nice logic, isn't it? Because it means that an individual can then make a difference just by showing somebody else that they care. That will hopefully pay forward and... I think some of it is, some of it feels quite um, innate, is that the right word? Intuitive. Or intu yeah, intuitive. I guess it's that idea of, I really love this person, I want them to be alright, what can I do that is helpful? I don't know, I don't know. Um, I mean, you just do, don't you? You would, you would care for anyone, really, if they needed it. Mm. I mean, if the need is there and you see it, um, why wouldn't you? Thank you.